Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another OpenGL screencast. I am David W. Parker, and today we'll be talking about tessellation. I've included a link to Wikipedia on what tessellation is, as well as the Red Book link on how to do it in OpenGL. If you don't want to follow my tutorial, definitely recommend the uh, Red Book still. Um, today, uh, basically what a tessellation you want to use that is whenever you're going to have a kind of, some kind of shape that has a, um, some either a shape within it you need to fill or not fill, or let's say you have like a star and you can't connect uh, the vertices together. So the main is pretty much all the same here. Let's take a look real quick at the uh, screencast.h. We just basically have a mode we'll iterate through. We have two uh, pentagons, a large one and a small one with XYZ values for those, um, as well as a uh, list of text that we'll use to display out uh, um, our different modes here. Uh, outline, filled in outline, etc, etc. Um, these are the externs, uh, the other ones are the externs and screencast. This is just the actual uh, characters. So uh, let's get started. And it globals is the same. We go ahead and we create uh, those pentagon, uh, pentagons at particular locations. Um, now we are doing XYZ, but you can see we're setting zero for both the Z's. And the reason that we're going to need the Z value, not just do two D's, is because of uh, glut here for tessellations. Uh, using plus and minus is the way we're going to iterate through our modes. Uh, we are using GL ortho as opposed to GL perspective. And let's take a look at what we have got here first. Um, so here we have those two, uh, two pentagons. And we can iterate through the modes. And you'll see how we draw each of these uh, momentarily. Um, and really, the first five modes don't have anything to do with tessellation. So if we look at uh, the display function here, we are going to, the first five, we're going to have different modes. And we can see, uh, we're going to outline, outline the star, out, uh, filled star, which is bad, and then star of the triangle, star of the quads. That's going to really break down why we need tessellation here in a sec. So let's look at those again. So the first one, this is everything filled in. This is the outline of a star. It looks pretty decent. Um, until we get to try to fill it in using the exact same star uh, programmatically, it, it ends up filling in the entire top, obviously, which is wrong. So you could fix that by using triangles and a pentagon in the middle. And then also trying to use quads, you could do the same thing. See, so this is one quad here second quad up here, third quad, fourth and fifth quad. So let's take a look at each of those first. Um, well, here's the, the pentagon. Uh, the large one is green with the vertices labeled and small one. Blue, that is drawn every single time regardless of what mode we are in. So here's the filled outline. That's everything being filled within the large pentagon. Here's the star, so this is a really simple way to grab the correct vertice to do a star. Um, and we just use a line loop to connect all those. Now this is where it gets interesting, is where we try to use the same fill. We just basically change the GL begin from line loop to polygon, and we end up having a, uh, a problem where it doesn't fill in correctly. So to fix that, we can use triangles to get all of the outer areas and then also go ahead with an orange we fill in this uh, the inner pentagon which is the small vertices or we could try to use quads which just uh, is also uh, kind of a pain to do that um, properly so that's really why we want to use tessellation here so yeah if we get back into it let's actually look at some tessellation code so first we just come up with a couple of functions this is what's called whenever a fatal error happens in tessellation and this is what happens whenever you have uh, vertices that uh, collide. So basically for our example, we're just going to uh, take the result here and throw in the coordinates that were given back in, into the result array. So it's super, super simple. You can do a lot of interesting things with these, uh, the weight and the data and whatnot, but for our example, we won't. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sending a, uh, creating a tessellated star based off the mode. And it, within star, you're going to have a uh, question whether to draw the outside star or not, the type, which is the line or fill, um, whether to draw the inside hole or not, um, 
and then a rule for the glue test winding rule. We only I'm only using positive and odd here, um, but we also have non-zero, negative, and this absolute uh, greater than two, uh, greater than equal to. So let's just go back down to the display function again, really quick, and just see a few of these. So for example. We're going to have a star, it's line mode with no hole, and it's positive rule. We're going to have a star of fill mode, no uh, no hole, and it's positive mode. So let's take a look at 6 and 7 real quick. And as soon as this loads. So here's 6, that's just the positive with the outline. Uh, so that's this one. And then positive fill is just the fill and star. So already super, super simple. Um, now let's look at the the next set here. These are going to be odd as opposed to positive. So the biggest difference is this middle area isn't filled in for the odd here. And then the every so if, with tessellations every other area is filled in um, basically. So for odd anyway, um, this these sections are filled in. If we had another circle in here, it would also be filled in in this particular example. And that's uh, eight and nine. 10, uh, we go ahead and say yes to having the hole now. So as you can see with hole, uh, ends up basically only thing is it ends up coloring the outsides in addition to the other one. Fill is pretty much the same. Uh, odd with hole ends up being look, look, looking like positive with hole. So those are the same. And then odd with hole now is, since we have a new uh, area being drawn for the tessellation, this gets colored, this, so it ends up being the opposite of the other example. Um, as this one. So we'll take a look at why momentarily. And then finally, uh, we have these last couple here, sorry for the jumping around, uh, where we're not drawing the star and we're only doing the hole um, with odd. So this is uh, just the hole with odd for the line, and then this is filled in hole. Uh, so let's go back and take a look at what the actual tessellated star does. And uh, just walk through the code. It's pretty simple. We use glue tessellator and create a new tessellator object by including glue new tests. We set the polygon mode to uh, GL line or GL fill. Uh, if it is GL line, then we want to set a line width. And then now we need to set the property. And so for this, we need to just give the rule on that tessellated object. Uh, Next, we have a, a number of callbacks we do when the tessellation begins, when it ends, we just call begin and end just like normal. Vertex, you're going to call GL vertex 3DV, and that's why we need the 3D object, because this GL uh, test vertex requires a 3D object. Um, even though we're only drawing them in 2D, you can draw tessellated objects in 3D. And then finally, combine, which is when there is an intersection, and then an error, uh, this happens, we call fatal. So anytime you do a tessellated object, you start with the glue test begin poly polygon um, and give it the tessellated object. Uh, I can't remember what the null stands for at the moment. Sorry about that. Uh, when we next, you're going to uh, begin a contour and then draw vertices within that and in contours. And that's basically how you're going to set each of these contours differently. So if we are drawing the star, basically we're going to give it the tessellated object with the actual locations of those. Uh, uh, star. So we actually know here's the uh, the endpoints of the star, um, which we figured out before by just drawing it um, by ourselves. Um, we draw the outside pentagon, which is we don't have a star mode on. We just draw the outside, and that's just the the outside points of the pentagon. And same with the small one. And each of these uh, contours are are separate. So just like you do a GL begin for some kind of shape and GL end. Uh, within this, you do the same thing. The hole itself, and this is where we got that interesting uh, difference ones, was uh, just showing that we have the large pentagon with, in addition to the uh, the star up here. So, um, pretty interesting to, to think about how that ends up affecting the whole thing. And then, as always, we end the polygon, and we want to delete it from memory so we don't uh, after it's already drawn. So. Uh, and then we want to set back to uh, the polygon mode, uh, back to fill, after we're done. So that's really all uh, all the things that we're doing here. Um, I believe I already showed you the pentagon, small and large, being drawn. And so uh, that's it. Um, hope you uh, 
learned a lot in this episode. Um, I don't really use tessellations a lot, but I probably should. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the screencast, and I will talk to you guys next time.